how did I learn programming for computational linguistics? This is the question that I get pretty often and I want to answer it in this video. I started learning how to code fully on my own. I didn't go to any school per se. I stayed at home and I learned it with a lot of online resources and most of them were completely for free. One of the most useful skill that I gained during that time uh, was Python skill. So Python is a programming language which is pretty beginner friendly. So if you've never learned a programming language, Python is a good place to start. I started learning it with the book. I think the name of it was like Python Crash Course. I don't even remember the edition number because there are multiple editions of this book. And I just felt like the book was so beginner friendly that I actually got super curious about things while reading and it only ignited uh, this curiosity uh, for Python. I think this, this book also has some projects, uh, but I did not do them. I just found some YouTube tutorials. I think uh, on Frequent Camp there is one big tutorial about Python, so I watched the two and I made some exercises uh, while doing that tutorial and also on YouTube you can find uh, some project ideas and I do think it is super helpful when you learn a new language to apply the knowledge right away. I also built a couple of projects, some were small and I also built uh, one e-commerce kind of website uh, and you can find a lot of not only actually about web development, but also about videos about Python on uh, Corey Schaefer's YouTube channel. That's my favorite YouTube channel about Python. And I highly recommend uh, to check it out if you are gonna learn Python. I used HackerRank uh, a lot for learning Python as well and also practicing because they have sets of coding challenges for different languages and Python is one of them and I think they also have like a more educational approach so they will give you some explanation as well. Uh, practicing with hacker rank uh, or uh, lead code was also something I did and I actually got back to it when I needed to uh, just get some more practice with Python uh, regex. I did study Python for web development mostly because my goal wasn't to become a computational linguist uh, but I still did become a computational linguist for a year uh, and so because my motivation was to build apps I also learned a couple of frameworks that exist for web development with Python so Flask and uh, Django. Uh, the most important parts of Python for computational linguistics for me were Python regex, so searching for patterns within uh, texts, and uh, also scripting, so automating some tasks, working with files, maybe copying something from one file to another, searching for something within a file, this kind of stuff. Also a little bit of NumPy and Pandas experience, I did try to build a movie recommendation engine, you can find a tutorial on YouTube. That was also something mm, kind of close uh, to my role, but I wouldn't say I used it a lot, though it was useful to read other people's code. And now let's take a step back. Before I started learning Python, I actually got some programming experience with JavaScript, and even before that, I took some general courses about programming. Think like a computer, the logic of programming course on open classrooms. I watched Crash Course Computer Science on YouTube just to get some idea of the field and some, some concepts and principles, you know, to get a high level overview, to explore things. And that was my first step when I decided to learn programming and to become a coder. Another resource that I liked was Grokking Algorithms. So when you start learning how to code, many people will say that it is important to learn algorithms and data structures. It is indeed, I do think it is important. It's just Quite often it is very technical for beginners. I personally got discouraged when I tried to watch, watch a video about it, which was super technical. But this book, Crooking Algorithms, is amazing. It is completely beginner friendly. And also I think anyone who's just interested in the topic who doesn't have a technical background will actually like the book. It is 
just intuitive. It has some pseudocode. Pseudocode is not real code, but it look, kind of looks like Python, if I'm not mistaken, because maybe it is with Python. I don't remember. But it is one great book to understand the logic and the whys behind algorithms and data structures and why it is important. And I just think it is a fun read for curious people. So far, we covered um, Python, Python regex, Python scripting, basics of the language. Uh, also exploration, the, mo the most important concepts of computer science, algorithms, data structures, uh, and uh, also the logic of programming, what is programming, what is computer, all this kind of stuff, having uh, some good idea about it is great. Also, during my interviews for a computational linguist position, uh, it did come in handy uh, the knowledge about big O notation, how to understand the uh, running time of, of an algorithm. It was asked. It wasn't as important, maybe, as it is for some software engineering positions. It wasn't the key part of that interview, but still it was asked, and it was uh, just a huge plus if I knew it. Uh, and fortunately, I was able to answer. I remember when I was learning JavaScript, I felt overwhelmed by the language, by uh, the browser itself as an, as an environment uh, where JavaScript runs. And there were a lot of concepts that I could not understand and some concepts within the language just didn't make any sense because I did not have the broader context. So. With Python, the situation was a little bit different and I feel like I was never burnt out while learning Python. I was never overwhelmed, maybe because it was my second programming language, maybe because it's just Python versus JavaScript. I don't know, but I feel like learning Python was a pretty smooth process. Uh, but also, looking at my experience with JavaScript, I'd say if something in the language does not make sense, it doesn't mean that you are not enough or something. Uh, sometimes it just, I don't know, you just need to reread the same thing or read it in multiple so resources, you know, um, to read it in different words to understand the concept. I wasn't definitely the fastest person to learn all these concepts, especially in the beginning. I just felt like in the beginning I was super slow and uh, uh, while I was learning and improving my speed of learning and understanding things uh, was also super important. And uh, you, ju you just need to remember that if you don't understand something, you can always get back to it. Uh, just keep moving, keep pushing. This is something my coding coach uh, told me a lot of times. Just keep pushing, keep going, and eventually you'll get it. Because I knew some people who were developers, I knew the importance of Git version control and GitHub. So knowing how to use GitHub uh, to be able to fork a branch, create a local repository, a clone uh, the remote repository, uh, and to commit to uh, push your changes, creating your branch, all those things are super important. And this is something I am now as a developer doing every day. These things were also useful for me when I was a computational linguist. And it was a huge advantage for me because many people, many linguists who joined, they had to learn how to use GitHub on the go. And I already had this understanding. I could focus on other things. So learning how to use Git can be an advantage. You can learn it on YouTube. I think I just watched some random videos on YouTube about what's Git and how to use GitHub. Uh, also, you can find articles on Google and uh, there are some courses, I think, maybe on Open Classroom that I watched. So as you can tell, I used multiple resources to learn the same thing over and over again because, well, sometimes it just takes time. And another thing of the sort is Terminal. How to use Terminal to, to navigate to a folder, to create a folder, create a file, maybe copy something from one file or create a copy of a file, or things like that. Also, there is a course on, on, on open classrooms that I uh, started with, and then there are a lot of YouTube videos about it that you can find. It's really not both Git and uh, Terminal. It's not like 
rocket science or anything it just requires constant practice i think sometimes i forget things just because i maybe don't use them as much and my terminal skills maybe now are not as good as they used to be when i had to use terminal to do a lot of things because there wasn't another way. And now I'm like just using some basic commands, just CD to some, some uh, folder, just go into folders, maybe creating files and uh, yes, not really anything advanced. But yeah, as a computational linguist, it was also something people could learn on the go, but I already had this knowledge and I came with it and it was a huge advantage. By now you can tell that I like circling back so if i started with fundamentals uh and i learned something it well it did not mean i will never go back to these things after i realized that my python skills are already well more or less robust so i can rely on them i decided to dive deeper into more fundamental stuff first i took machine learning course so when i got the job i realized that i needed to have an idea about machine learning not that it was required no one expected for me to actually build algorithms or to work closely with existing machine learning algorithms but knowing the principles was a huge plus it was something that was recommended to me by my uh, future manager at the time and uh, I took the machine learning course by Andrew NG on Coursera, which is completely for free, but you can pay for it and uh, support uh, the creator of the course and also to get a certificate if you want. After this, I decided to dive even deeper into fundamentals and I took accelerated computer science course on Coursera. It was by a university in Illinois, I think, uh, and it had C++, uh, the language is uh, the main language of the course and then I decided to take three courses about algorithms uh, with the mathematical proof of some of the algorithms I must say I was challenged uh, but it was also fun to to dive deeper into these things uh, I used Python by the way to complete the exercises because you can choose any language you want uh, when you take this course. Each time I circle back on something, I gain a better understanding of this thing, whatever that is. Uh, and so you can imagine that I circled back on Python and some concepts or frameworks quite a lot throughout the whole time. So it wasn't like I sat down for three months, I learned Python and I moved forward. I'd say I would just focus on Python for let's say a month, then maybe I would focus on something else a while, having Python on the background, uh, maybe like watching some videos, maybe building some small projects and using it in any way. Uh, and then in some time I circle back and I concentrate on uh, the language again. So uh, this whole process, it also included JavaScript, web development, like HTML, CSS, React, all of these things that were here all the time. Uh, and uh, I do think it is super important to circle back on things. <laughs> so I'm just saying this once again. My least favorite thing of all of these things was preparing for a coding interview. Uh, so a couple of the interviews for that computational linguist position that I eventually got were technical. So I had to solve coding challenges and uh, also explain time complexity and all this stuff. I prepared for a coding interview with a couple of things. First, on Hacker Rank, there is this interview preparation kit, which is basically just like a lot of challenges that are uh, kind of sorted into groups. Um, this was useful. Some of the challenges were similar to what they have in there. So I highly recommend. Also, there is this book, Cracking the Coding Interview. I wouldn't say this is the best book to learn things. This is probably a good book to revise things when you already have the knowledge and just need to uh, brush up on uh, your skills. And uh, another course, that I took and I think that was the best of them all. I, I even got curious about these challenges along the way. Uh, and this is when I basically felt like I am kind of enjoying preparing for an interview for the first time. Uh, this was the coding interview bootcamp. 
Uh, unfortunately, this is based on JavaScript, so for computational linguists, maybe it is not going to be as relevant because JavaScript is not the most common language you need for computational linguistics, but I personally think that that course was great. It had some of the most common coding challenges that you can get asked. Uh, so I really enjoyed it. I didn't finish it though, because I just got the job before <laughs> I could finish it. Uh, but I watched maybe 30% and I think um, it was fun. Like each, each section is basically one small example, uh, one small challenge, and uh, there are a couple of solutions. So yeah, and also the um, instructor is very inspiring, I'd say. So I really like his approach. Uh, so yeah, there are three resources. You can find coding challenges uh, to practice with for free, uh, like on HackerRank, or you can look into Udemy courses. So that course was in Udemy. I haven't really taken any computational linguistics courses like natural language processing and understanding. I haven't studied those, like never. Uh, so I am not the one to recommend anything here at all. If you have, then share your thoughts or if you have anything to add, maybe your experience of becoming a computational linguist, also share. I think people who are thinking about getting into computational linguistics will appreciate it. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. Like it and subscribe to my channel for more language, linguistics and programming content. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.